And now in Africa, while the war in Sudan is not having any fruitful ceasefires, other countries with its citizens in Sudan have started evacuation of their countrymen and women. A ship carrying people from 13 countries has arrived in Saudi Arabia and the United States have evacuated all embassy staffers and their families by helicopter from Khartoum. Sudan's army has said it's taken steps to help more foreign nationals escape the, the conflict. Well, in the Sudanese capital, chaired paramilitary pickup um, trucks hit by airstrikes litter um, the main streets and weary residents kill for bread in neighborhoods largely emptied of civilian life. On the outskirts, people logged suitcases long distances by foot towards um, bus stops as they tried to flee the city. A journey that would normally take a little more than 30 minutes, but took three hours amid the chaos of the conflict. Well, as you know by now, the clashes pit Sudan's army against the paramilitary rapid support forces, the RSF. They jointly staged a coup in 2021, but came to blows over plans for an internationally backed transition to civilian rule. It is the first time fighting on this scale has affected the capital, which is composed of Khartoum and the adjoining cities of Bari and Omdurman, and has a total population of more than 10 million at a confluence of the Nile. Airstrikes, shelling and gun batters have ripped across the city day and night, unabated through the final days of Ramadan when Muslims fast from dawn till dusk, and through the three-day <coughs> holiday of Eid al-Fitr, which ends on Sunday, despite repeated promises of ceasefires. Reports from Reuters, who got an inside look of the recent war incident, has it that the RSF has embedded itself in several neighborhoods, taking over buildings, while the army has used airstrikes and heavy um, artillery to try to force its rivals back. Well, according to residents and witnesses contacted by Rutas, the army has said it is trying to clear hotbeds of rebel groups from the capital. The violence has cut water and power to much of the city and damaged and closed hospitals with the two most vital day-to-day -day amenities cut out. One can only imagine what these residents have to go through. Many civilians are trapped in their homes or stranded, risking theft and looting if they venture out. Only a couple of days into the war, the crime rate has increased significantly. Who said there was anything beautiful about war? Well, crossing the blue now to Bari, there is a scene of heavy clashes over the past two days. Cycling west crossing the river of Omaduman from Katun, you see a city transformed by the military power struggle. After more than a week of welfare, residential streets have become largely deserted. Worst of all, petrol has become hard to obtain with few cars. Supplies of flour and other stables are dwindling, and vegetables are scarce and expensive as well. Star so indeed, it can only be a down and spiral with war. Mm. Indeed, it can be only a downward spiral with war. I mean, at the main market in Bari, many buildings were badly damaged and burned by fighting and airstrikes. In some areas further from central Khartoum, buses could be seen preparing to carry people north towards Egypt, part of an exodus that has guarded pace over the past week. People carrying small bags um, tried to hitch rides with passing cars or catch minibuses heading out of the city. Well, near the half fire bridge linking Abari to Omadma, a long diplomatic convoy with armed guards and flying British flags could be seen heading west. One of the evacuations of embassy staff and foreign citizens that began on Saturday and gathered peace on Sunday as the fighting abated slightly. Well, he have a tweet from the President of the United States and it reads, today on my orders, the United States military conducted an operation to extract U.S. government personnel from Khartoum in response to the situation in Sudan. I am grateful for the commitment of our embassy staff and the skill of our service members who brought them to safety. Well, from it, you see that the U.S. and so many other countries have successfully evacuated their citizens back home. But what is the hope for a Southern Cameroonian who fled the ongoing war at home and sadly hit another? Where can they be evacuated to? Back to war? It is a tragic 
tale from the fry pan to fire. And only the British Southern Cameroon's interim government, reaching a peaceful negotiation with the French Cameroon's administration, can ensure true peace and give Amazonians the liberty to call their motherland home once again, and not a place to run from or be afraid of. Until these peaceful negotiations are reached, war cannot be the answer.